Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to my channel, Chilling with Londa. It's been a while. I haven't uploaded in about a week and I truly miss y'all. You know, having a full-time job, it really be, I have to find the time to sit down and tell y'all these stories and the things that I go through, but I found the time today. And you already know what time it is. It's a story time. But before I get into the story, you already know what I'm going to say. If you haven't joined my channel, be sure to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment down below. And if you're returning, hey, 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 what's been up? I know you miss me. So let's go ahead and get into the story, y'all. From the comments on one of my previous story times, I see that y'all like the story with the hotel. And I worked in the hotel for a couple of years, y'all. Maybe like four years. Mm, more than a couple, but about four years when I was younger. And let me tell y'all, I have many experiences. A lot of things happen. A lot of good things. A lot of funny things. And yeah, it wasn't one of the best jobs ever. It wasn't the best paying job either. But I enjoyed the majority of the time I worked in hotels. Sweet. Not to mention working at the Hilton. I did get to work at the Hilton some years back. And they have one of the best cricket and they have one of the best employee discounts ever if you work at the hilton you know 35 dollars hotels everywhere international so that's one of the only things i miss working on with the hilton other than that it is story times child so again let's go ahead and start <laughs> so in my later years retiring from the hotel industry i was working at the hilton and you know, it was a very small hotel. I think I have a story time about this hotel, too. Very small hotel, very dainty. Mostly truck drivers would come to this hotel. It was close to the airport. It was close to the airport, but it was very small. We, it was like 70 to 90 rooms. Very small hotel, very quiet. I love that hotel. <sighs> so, I worked front desk. Sometimes I would work morning, sometimes I would work afternoon. And when I would work in the morning time, I got to work with this finance lady. She was like the quick, the, the finance lady. She was our accountant at the hotel. We're going to call her Miss B. Miss B was cool. She would come up to the front desk sometimes. She would talk to me. She wasn't very talkative, but she would come up sometimes and she would talk to me, keep me company, steal snacks from the front, and she would go back to the back to her desk. Miss B was very cool. I would also be in contact a lot with this lady. We're going to call her lunch lady. I don't think I want to give her name. We're just going to call her lunch lady. She would provide the breakfast in the morning for the hotel. So she would come very, very early, even before me, and start the breakfast for the hotel. So we're going to call her lunch lady. She was a, a nice lady, Spanish lady. Nice, very sweet. She was also very, she didn't talk much, very soft-spoken. She would only speak if you speak to her but you know i was there for like a, a year or two and we worked together every morning that i worked so lunch lady me and her became tight very sweet lady didn't have an issue with her now miss b and lunch lady them two were very cool like inside of work outside of work lunch lady and miss b they were home girls they would they would come to work together sometime miss b didn't have to be to work until 9 a.m but she would drop Miss uh, the lunch lady off sometimes because lunch lady she had transportation problems. So she would drop she would drop lunch lady off at the hotel, and she would come back later to start her shift. They was that close. Lunch lady and Miss B they were home girls. They were real good friends. Lunch lady would talk to me. She would tell me some personal stuff. She had a daughter, a teenage daughter who was about to go to college. She had a nice, it seemed like she had a nice little life going on. This lunch lady would talk to me in the morning time. Once she set the breakfast out, honey, put the bacon and eggs, the muffins. Once she got everything out, everything set and pretty, and she can take a breather, she would come to the front desk and bring me a plate and we would talk. She told me she was married, you know, had a daughter. She even um, tried to get her daughter a job at the front desk at the hotel. And lunch lady was a whole vibe. She was really cool. She had a husband. So time is going on. Sometimes lunch lady would come to the front and talk to me. Sometimes she couldn't. So her husband, I finally got to see him. He would come to the hotel sometimes. He would come on her lunch breaks, bring her, you know, lunch, uh, something he cooked for her, you know, just want to bring her little things. He would come sometimes, and I just would simply walk to the back and be like, lunch lady, your husband in the front, 
and lunch lady husband. He was cool, chubby guy. He was all right. I don't know how to describe him. He just was a Spanish chunky guy, uh, black hair. <laughs> I don't know. He was well-dressed. Um, he would wear a lot of suit and ties a lot. He didn't really dress casual when he came to the front desk, I noticed. So I'm assuming that lunch lady husband was some type of office worker, some type of, he had some type of career where he had to dress nice in suits and ties all the time because every time he came to the front, he had on a tie. I never got any indications from lunch lady and her husband that anything was wrong. They, you know, Every time he came to the hotel, it was just a quick exchange anyway. He just would come, bring her something, and that was that. Now, he would sit at the front in the front lobby with her sometime, maybe five to ten minutes. They would talk while she would eat her lunch. Miss B would come out there, you know, because she's cool with the lunch lady, so she would come out there and talk with them at the table. They would, uh, you know, just talk, I guess, because they're friends or whatever. So, And I would just work. I would do my front desk duties, check people in and out. I just would notice that they're all kind of cool. Again, Miss B was a very quiet lady. She rarely came to the front to, unless she was coming for a snack or to say something about some policy or anything like that. She was really cool and she was out of the way kind of lady. Now, lunch lady, one day lunch lady, she was telling me, oh, next week I'm going to need your help when you, when you work the morning shifts because I'm going on vacation for a week. And I'm like, hey, that's what's up, lunch lady, you know? Because lunch lady, she looked like she worked hard. I'm not going to lie. Lunch lady worked hard. So I'm like, okay, that's what's up, what you need me to do. So I wasn't going to, like, cook the breakfast and stuff like that. But what I was just going to do, she was there was going to have somebody cook the breakfast, and she needed me to just help when nobody was at the front desk to just put out the stuff, like just help that person pretty much. And I agreed because that's my girl. Lunch lady was my girl. Like she was cool. And I'm like, okay, you going on vacation, you know, where you going? She told me she was going to what back to her country and, and she was going to have see her family and she was going to, her and her daughter, they was just going to go on vacation. And I was happy for her because, you know, anytime somebody's going on vacation, I mean, like that's, come on out amazing so I was looking forward to her going on vacation because she was excited and I was excited too it's time for lunch lady to go on her vacation so it's like the day before she's leaving for her vacation I'm working the afternoon shift that day and she was leaving going to be on vacation the next day so I wasn't going to see her but I was going to be working morning so she you know I did get to see her a couple hours before she ended and we briefed she briefed me on what I needed to do to help the guy for breakfast and I'm like okay lunch lady I got this I got this you know don't worry go on your vacation and have a good time right so so she's gone and me and the guy we're working it y'all me and him we're working breakfast everything goes good I tend I don't know for some reason the boss put me on the money schedule for that week I guess he knew that I was good with breakfast so I was it's like three days later at this point now lunch lady is on her vacation Miss B is telling me updates on how she's doing and she's showing me little pictures on her phone because you know they friends so she's showing me pictures of her on her trip and Miss and, and lunch lady look like she having a good time y'all she got on her bathing suit shy she with a family there at the beach they having a good time this is three four days later so now I'm working in another morning shift right so I'm working it's about you know breakfast ends at like I don't know 12 it's maybe like one o'clock because I remember I had wiped the, the, the tables down in the front lobby and everything was calm so I'm at the front desk and I'm scrolling through my phone and I can hear the slider doors open in the lobby so in my head I'm thinking she's who is this check-in is not until three it's only one o'clock who could this you know why people, whatever. So I picked my head up. And guess who it is? It was husband. So I instantly just frowned my face up pretty much just how I did because my face shows it all. So I'm confused. I was thinking like, you know, so what he's here for? So he walks up to the front desk and he's just looking around like, you know, kind of like, you know, I don't know. Just I don't want to say he's looking for lunch lady, but he just walked in like, I don't know, just looking for somebody. So he see me. So he walks up to the front desk and I greet him. I'm like, hey, husband, how are you? And I'm like, what you doing here? Like he was like, um, I come to bring lunch lady some food. And I'm like, huh? 
So he's like, yeah, is lunch lady what she's doing that she's in the back? And I'm like, no. Confused. So I'm like, lunch lady is, is on vacation. She hasn't been here in the last four days. What are you talking about? So he's just like, huh? Like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, she's on vacation. It's like three or four days now. Aren't you like, y'all married? Y'all don't talk. You know, I'm not saying it rude like that, but I'm kind of talking to him like, yeah, aren't you a husband? Like, she didn't tell you kind of like, you know, like she didn't tell you. I know lunch lady didn't just run off on this man and didn't tell her husband she's on vacation. So I'm like, she didn't tell you. And so he was like, oh, you know, no, she didn't tell me. So he was stumbling over his words just you know how you're talking to somebody and they just trying to put pieces together of a story and it just did not make sense whatsoever. So I'm standing there and I'm just like, that is so weird. So as soon as I told husband that lunch lady is on vacation, before I can get any more information out of him, he turns around and he walks back out of the lobby doors. So I'm standing there so confused. I'm like, wow, that's weird. So when Miss B comes back from wherever she was walking in the hotel, she comes back past me and I'm like, Miss B, have you spoke to lunch lady? Uh, you know, just being, you know, just casual. I'm like, you know, how's the lunch lady doing? Like, you know, she's like, oh, she's fine. I talked to her a couple hours ago. What's wrong? Like, uh, you know, um, anybody asked for her or whatever? I'm like, yeah, her husband. So Miss B is like her husband. I'm like, yeah, her husband. So Miss B is like, she's on vacation. He he knows that. Like, he knows she's on vacation because I was just talk I was just with them, blah, blah, blah. She said she was with them not too long ago before the vacation. The husband was with them to, you know, helping white uh helping lunch lady get ready for the vacation. So it was very strange why he didn't know that she was on vacation. And I'm very confused as well. So Miss B is just standing there and she's like, huh. You know, she was just thinking about it, and I'm thinking about it, too. So, I'm in my head, I'm like, oh, some stuff finna go down. I don't know. I just be ready for the mess, honey. So, I'm like, something about to go down. So, Miss B, she just, she kind of brushed it off and ended the conversation, and she went back to her office. So, now it's like, you know, t the day has ended, and I go home, and again, like I said, for some reason, they kept scheduling me for this morning shift, so... The next day, I had to work the morning shift, and I'm there again helping this guy with breakfast. Everything goes good. So it's like 9.30. Miss B comes in the lobby. She comes in the lobby. I remember how I told y'all she barely spoke to me unless, you know, it was something that we had to converse with, you know, talking to each other about. Um, but this morning, she comes through the lobby doors, and she just instantly locked eyes with me, so... You know, I ain't going to lie. Like, we're not that close, me and Miss B, but woman to woman, you know when some mess going on. So, when she walked in and she locked eyes at me, I was locking eyes back with her, waiting for her to come back to the back of the desk. Because I'm like, ooh, girl, tell me, what's tea? So, she walked to the back of the, 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 the desk and we we're talking. So, she was like, yesterday, what did lady husband, lunch lady husband ask you? And I was like, well, he asked me, did was lunch lady here? And so... I told him, I'm saying, lunch lady's on vacation. Don't you know that you're her husband? So Ms. B was like, right. So she was like, how did he look when he walked through the lobby? I was like, he looked like he was searching for someone. He looked, you know, normal to me. But then I thought about it a little bit while me and her was talking. He did look a little like he was kind of like kind of kind of like trying to sneak a little bit he walked in looking around i took it as he was looking around for maybe help but no now that I, I thought about it he was looking around to see if anyone was in the lobby to see him so yeah me and miss b came up with that conclusion because he know his wife was on vacation why are you why are you coming to the hotel looking for her so me and miss b girl came up with the conclusion that he was just coming to the hotel trying to sneak in and hopefully no one that knows him he can just sneak by that's what we came up with because your wife is on vacation and you don't know about it lies he was trying to be sneaky and so now let's just fast forward to the to the to the nitty-gritty let's just fast forward a little bit so now it's it's like a couple months later lunch lady's been back from her vacation everything is going good i don't know if miss b ever told lunch lady that her husband came up 
to that hotel looking for her when he knew she was on vacation, trying to be sneaky? I don't know. But I just know that the relationship between Miss B and Lunch Lady was still good. Everyone was still cordial. We all still got along. I think Miss B just kept that to herself, honestly, because me and Miss B, we spec, we assumed, we was spectating. We didn't have facts. We just seen him there, and we just it was very weird, and you know we didn't have facts. So I don't think Miss B told Lunch Lady that her husband came up there. So now. One day, I am working afternoon shift. And lunch lady, you know, I start at 3, lunch lady leave at 5. So, it's only about a two-hour time frame that I see lunch lady when I'm working afternoon. So, lunch lady is now gone home, and I'm there working front desk by myself. Well, Miss B is still in the back along with the GM or whatever. They're about to leave very soon. So I'm there working by myself. The GM has left the building. Hey, bye everybody. Peace out. And now it's just me and Miss B working. I'm in the front. She's in the back. So I had a difficult customer. I rem I'm a guest. I remember I was trying to check in this lady. We banned this lady. She was some type of cultural lady. She would sprinkle, uh, what is it, baby powder or baking soda around the room like I'm talking about all over the carpet, all over the bed. She would sprinkle it all in our bathrooms. She just would sprinkle it all over the hotel room. So we, the hotel banned her pretty much because she went clean it up. So she would keep coming, though. She would keep coming. I don't know if I was, I just seemed nice or whatever. She felt like she could put one over on me. She just kept trying me when I was working. So she was one she was that difficult guest so i'm speaking with her and i'm telling her that she's banned she can't come time is moving time is moving i can see a line behind her forming it's like maybe two or three people behind her a line is forming and this lady she would not let up on me y'all she was like no i want this hotel and i want it now miss girl was not giving up she was not she wanted that hotel and she was giving me a run for my money that day because i remained professional i tried to remain professional at all times i was giving her the benefit of the doubt i kept explaining to her over and over and over again she could not but this lady miss girl was not letting up on me honey so, Miss B hear all of this going on because after a certain point, the professionalism is out the door. My tone goes from here to here, and it started to get a little too much. So, Miss B can hear all of this going on, I guess, because Miss B, next thing I know, I look to my right, and Miss B is standing next to me, just standing there. So, I guess to just be assistance and to act as a, you know, a, a superior, I don't know. She just was standing next to me for support pretty much so the lady i'm explaining and it's finally she finally get it she finally get it and she take her little stuff and she snatches it and she walks away the next person walks up i'm gonna check them in i'm checking them in i'm asking for id and all of this stuff miss b still standing next to me i can feel her nudging me um, so I, I looked to Miss B and she whispers in my ear. She was like, isn't that, she was like, isn't that lunch lady husband? But she said his name, y'all. I can't say his name because I didn't even give him a name for the story time. So she nudged me and she whispered in my ear. She said, isn't that lunch lady husband? So I look up and I didn't want to just like, you know what I mean? In line. <laughs> so I tried to play it off. So I tried to. You know, very cute and demure. So I tried to look to the back of the line. <laughs> and I said, yeah. So she just continued standing there. She continued standing there. And I mind you, it is so crazy. Lunch lady had left work maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour or two before this. So Miss B still standing next to me. The, I checked that guest in. The next person is coming. So the line is getting shorter, right? Miss B is still standing next to me. So, Miss B, she's still nudging me, and we're talking as I'm checking in these guests. And so she's like, is he with that boy? And in front of him was a, a like a, I won't say teenage, he probably was like 19, 20, maybe 22. One of those 
rocker guys, one of those rocker dudes uh, looking kind of guy. Tonight would be the night that I would fall for you. Type guys, you know, he had the swoop going on, dude. Had the nose ring, dude. Had on his spike jacket with his boots. You know what I'm saying? One of those. Y'all get the picture how that how the young man look, right? So, <laughs> I check in the next guest, and the line is just steady moving up. He had balls. So the line is moving up, and, like, the rocker dude, he's, like, two two people behind. So now lunch lady husband walks out of the lobby doors. I don't know if he thought he was invisible. I don't know if he thought we didn't have eyes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So me and Miss B just standing there, like, me and Miss B just standing here like, I'm, I'm sure she should be thinking the same thing because we seen Mr. Guy just walk out, try to slide try to slide out these lobby doors like we didn't see him standing behind this little rocker dude, right? So the reason why we was focused on the rocker dude, it was Miss B idea, y'all. Miss B put it in my head. She was like, why he standing behind? Why he standing so close behind this young guy? So I'm checking in. I'm checking in. So now... Miss B has walked off. Miss B has walked off. She's went to her back office. I didn't see Miss B. So I'm checking in. So now, tonight will be the night. <laughs> it's in front of me now. <laughs> it's his turn to get checked in. So he's, you know, I take his ID. I didn't remember looking at his age, but I remember, you know, just I take his ID, his credit card, give him a room key. Honey, he was in room 501. I can't forget it. He was in room 501. I check him in. He leaves upstairs, right? So, Miss B comes back. Miss B must be was listening until when I checked him in. So, she comes back. She was like, what room he in? I tell him, 501, honey. So, she was like, bet. All right, cool. So, she was like, um, I don't know what she had concocted in her brain. Till this day, I'm just telling y'all my side and how I was being nosy and messy with the situation. Got to buy me a camera pretty soon because this storage is not going to work. Anyways, um, so yeah, I was just taking what I was taking from the information and I was just being nosy and messy and that was that. So, Miss uh, B, she ended up leaving after a while, maybe like 30, 20, 30 minutes after the little guy checked in, Miss <laughs> B leaves. So, she, um, I took it upon myself. So, it was maybe like an hour, not even an hour and a half later. I be on it with my approximation, y'all, clocky. But maybe like an hour and a half later, I just wanted to be nosy. It was very quiet in the lobby. It was nothing going on. So that hotel, it was only like one entrance and one exit. Most people just took the lobby uh, exit and entrance. So maybe like an hour and a half, I'm at the front desk scrolling through my phone board, and I see walking out i see him walking out of the lobby door so he leaves i wait like 10 minutes because i'm like i want to make sure he leaves because you know i want it to be nosy so when he left i makes me a, a hotel key um to 501 and i go upstairs and i go inside i not well before i go inside i make sure i knock i knocked on the door i did so i knock on the door i didn't hear anyone so I go inside with the key. Oh, y'all. When I say them sheets was tore up, they were tore up. Tore up, sheets messed up, the bed messed up. Uh, towels are on the floor. They just took fresh showers, honey. So I leave from out the bathroom. I go to the, the living room, the bedroom, and I see Magnum wrappers, honey, all on the, the, the cabinet, the dresser where the light lamp at. It was at least two wrappers inside of the trash. <laughs> Y'all, no kidding. No kidding. So what I do, I take out my handy dandy cell phone and I snap some photos and videos of the bathroom, the bed, the sheets was all pulled back because they were getting it on. Magnum condom wrappers was everywhere. I took pictures. I took a couple pictures of and I immediately hauled out of that room back to the front desk because they could have came back. They look like, you know, anybody could forget something. So I leave. I go back to the front desk and I send those pictures and videos to Miss B. Because, what? Now, y'all might be saying, why are you being so nosy? Why y'all being so nosy with this young man and this condom rappers? You don't know who he could have been in there with. Honey, Miss B 
told me she saw him go up go up the stairs with this young man. She already suspected him of being with this young man from the time they were standing in line. He was standing up close on him, almost like crouched to butt type close. He walked away, thought we didn't see him, honey. So when I sent Miss B these pictures, she just knew. She texted me back. She was like, oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Lunch lady husband was in 501 with that rocker dude. With the young rocker dude, y'all. With the young rocker dude. So sad. So sad. And, yeah, I don't know if Miss B ever told her because Miss B felt she looked very hurt. I'm not going to lie because Lunch Lady was a very sweet woman. She was very friendly. Not to mention her and Lunch Lady was very cool. They was friends, y'all. So her husband was cheating with this boy. I had the proof. I felt bad a little bit. Not really. I'm not going to lie. I felt bad that I sucked her the pictures because I felt like a snitch a little bit. But I didn't feel bad. I saw Miss B, all of those pictures, all of those videos of them condom rappers. Her husband was up and up with that boy. So sad. And it is. It's crazy. And it just made me feel like he really did not give a damn. You really come to a hotel where your wife work. Not only where your wife work, your your wife friend, good friend, she also works at this hotel. Not only them two, I, I'm going to say me too because... As many times as husband came to drop lunch lady off uh, breakfast and lunch or whatever, you would think that he would care about me too. Yolanda seeing me, she knows I'm, I'm married to lunch lady. He didn't give a damn. He didn't care with the damn cheating being gay. And that just bring me to a thought. So that's that story time, y'all. But th that just bring me to a thought I had. I was thinking about earlier. Y'all think he was prostituting? Ooh, can I say that? Y'all think he was tooting? <laughs> Do y'all think he was tooting? We grown here. Um, so that brings me to my next thought. Um, so I have an ex, right? Who came out as uh well, he is a DL man to this day. Um he is into other men, and that would be a story time that I decide to tell. I will put together um, and decide to tell pretty soon. Um, but he is a DL man. But my thought process with this is, so years ago when we were young, because we dated when, when I was young, um, and we were staying with his sister, and... Um, I was just, I just thought that this ex was just my world. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't live without him. And I was just pretty much attached to him. So, one night, he leaves, uh, he, he go, well, one day he goes to work. And he used to get off work, like, 6 or 7 in the afternoon. And one day, it was, like, 9, 10 o'clock. So, I'm sitting in the room, and I'm just worried because I'm like, okay, well, he hasn't come home from work. And I've been blowing his phone up pretty much all day. No answer. So it's like 10 o'clock, no answer. 11 o'clock, no answer. Nothing. 12 o'clock, no answer. 1 o'clock, no answer. I eventually end up falling asleep. Uh, Just to find out that he got arrested. So he called his sister. Didn't even call me. Called his sister. So woke up in the morning time. His sister told me he had been arrested. So I'm like, okay, at least I know he's alive. Just anxious for him to get off or get out. So I'm sitting in the living room just sick, y'all. Uh, sometime that afternoon, the next day, he comes home and he comes in the living room. And, um, you know, I was excited or whatever. And this, you know, I was just, I told, I asked him what happened or he, it, the, the story was very brief at first. Oh, I don't remember what he told me because it was a lie. I can't even remember. He told me so many things, but I'm assuming something in the scope of traffic stop, something, something stupid minor. So me being young, I'm like, oh, wow, you're free. That's all I cared about. So years later, let me get to my point. So years, years, years later, we were talking and he finally, uh, I had, was always curious about the reason he got arrested that night. So I asked him again in conversation. We wasn't even together at this point, but I just was still curious so I asked him that night you got arrested what happened so he tells me that he was in a sting operation so I'm like okay you know I took that answer so I'm like okay sting operations that's when the police set you up 
you know, so you can go to jail, set you up to do bad stuff, like to be Johns and Joes and, and tricks and thieves and stuff like that. They set you up so that you can go to jail, right? Now, let me repeat myself. So, I'm going to repeat myself again because uh, isn't a sting operation is when the, the, the authorities, they try to attempt to trap you for doing criminal activities like being a John, a Joe, a trick, a thief, things like that. Am I right or am I wrong? So I initially took the answer and I ran with it, but I still thought about it because I'm like, you know, it just don't resonate with me. And I still asked him again. So you was in the sting operation. So he was like, yeah. And I'm like, OK, so I'm asking y'all today. Do y'all think he was out there tooting too? Because if you was in a sting operation, you had to be attempting to do something bad to get caught. Right. And this was just, and this is just still years later, still on my brain because it's like, was you out there tooting for one, and two, was it with one of those gay men? You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just on my brain because that story time of the hut with lunch lady husband being with the gay guy, and then me, you know, it just brought back some memories. And again, if I'm wrong, say I'm wrong in the comments, but it isn't a sting operation if you go to jail, you had to be attempting to do something right. So yeah, I know I'm not tripping. I don't know I'm not tripping, but y'all, this is going to be the end of my story time. Just sitting here running my mouth. If y'all enjoyed my story, you already know, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you're not, like my video, and of course, leave a comment down below because that's the only way I can communicate with y'all. I really appreciate you. If you tuned in, if you watched the whole video into its entirety, or if you just watched a piece of me and enjoyed it, I really appreciate your support. And until next time, I am out. Peace.